OK, so apologize for projector issues, but uh, what else is new, right? OK, so today we're going to continue on with our uh, master site file. And we're going to work to create our interior night rendering. So this is really a kind of a baby step from what we did in the last class, where we um, did the interior day rendering. And as part of the interior day rendering, we added some furniture, and we added some light fixtures, and we proceeded to do our rendering. Hopefully, this is all, of course, theoretical if you, if you were at this stage and were doing it. Um, but we proceeded to do our interior day rendering such that we could see blue sky and uh, content beyond the windows is the idea. Uh, but, of course, we needed to do some interior lighting so that we could light up what the interior uh, was looking like. Okay, so I have the same view open. It's the same view that I saved from last class. It's the interior one view. You can, of course, pick a different view if you want. You can choose to work within the same view if you would like to do it that way as well. There's nothing wrong with doing the same view in a day and a night setting. So, given that I have this view, I already have my lights installed in the master site file. Uh, it looks like I'm missing one light right there. No, it's there. Uh, it's just getting clipped a little bit funny. So I have my lights installed. Everything's working pretty well. The only major problem is that this is a daytime setting instead of a nighttime setting. So I'm going to walk through the process of switching over into the night settings uh, and how we might go through that. But before I, I get into that, I want to show you something. And that when we open up the V-Ray options panel here, at the very top, there's three buttons. You guys may have loaded VizOpt files from my sample files earlier, so you're familiar with loading. But now that I have the ability to uh, do this daytime render and I'm happy with it, before I move on, the first thing I'm going to do is open the V-Ray Option Editor and click the Save icon. And what this does is it saves all of my V-Ray settings, my HDRI background, my sun, everything else, as a daytime file such that I can go backwards and re-render the daytime later. So when I'm done today, I'll be able to switch between night and day and just turn on the sun, turn off the sun, and do the rendering and call it a day. So it makes it really easy. Uh, so I'm going to go onto my flash drive. I'm going to go into today's folder. And so this is right here. And I'm going to call this, uh, let's interior. day I'm calling it V-Ray settings it's going to be a dot vizop file so I'm going to know that that's what it is anyway and at that point I'll go ahead and click on save that gives me my daytime settings so I can go back to exactly what I have right now and re-render it if I want now it's time to start loading in the nighttime settings and so what I'll do is I'll go on the course website and if you go under Resources and you go to the V-Ray Quick Rendering Setups, you probably pick the basic, basic Day Scene 1, 2, or 3. We have Basic Night Scene 1, 2, and then we have Sunset Scene 1, 2, and 3. In my view, a Sunset Scene is essentially the same as a nighttime setting. So if you want to do a sunset instead of a nighttime, that works for me. It doesn't have to be a true night. It can be sunset as well. So I'll walk through this twice. The first one I'll do is with, uh, I'll do the basic night scene two, and then I'll do one of the sunset scenes so you can see the difference. Um, in all of these, I have little previews of what the, the, the renderings look like or what the background looks like. So you can kind of take, take a look. You'll probably see more on the sunset one there. Um, so you can see what the, the sky background would look like. So like I said, I'm going to work with the basic night scene 2. In order to do this, I need to download this Moonlight zip file that contains the HDRI images for me. For me personally, I already have it on my flash drive, so I'm not going to download it. But I have all the settings here, but I can also download the, the uh, VizOpt file that will preload all the settings for me. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on this file and say Save Link As. And for right now, I'll just put it on the desktop. Remember that if you click on this link, it's going to give you an XML file. It's going to be a bunch of garbage that isn't going to mean much. So make sure that you right click on it and then save link as a VizOpt file. 
So at this point, I'll go back over to Rhino. And in my V-Ray option editor here, I'll open one of the drawers. Doesn't matter which one, just open one of the drawers because this will confirm that it loaded correctly because the drawer will close. And I'm going to click on the load button at the top of the V-Ray option editor. When I click on that, I'm going to go to, this was on my desktop, there it is. And I'll go ahead and say open. When it's loaded the settings, it will close all the drawers. That's why I opened one of the drawers. I can confirm that it closed. And I can go through and see that it did, in fact, load correctly. So the physical camera is on. Uh, the shutter speed is at 100, which is exactly what it says right here. So all those settings have been loaded for me. We're going to go check the reflection, refraction background, and also the GI skylight. Those are the next two things. So we'll close down the camera. We'll go to um, environment. And my reflection, refraction background, I didn't remember what it was supposed to be. GI skylight to 1, reflection, refraction background to 0.25. Now it looks like those were off a little bit. Um, What was it again? Not remembering. 1 and 0 0.25. <coughs> I had that at 1, and this was 0 0.25. I may need to adjust that. I don't know why my settings were a little bit different. I may have overridden it and not updated the website. OK, so those are there. I'm going to go into output, and I'm going to change the output to be a lot smaller. We need to do some test renderings that are small. Come on, V-Ray. There we go. Uh, let's make that height down at like 100. So this is nice and small, and we can check it. So I've got those two installed, but I do need to also double check on the environment that it knows where the Moonlight uh, HDRI backgrounds are. So under the skylight, I'll click on the M. And I want to make sure that it knows where this Milky Way light is. So I will go into my flash drive. I'll go into my resources, go into HDRI, night. There's the moonlight one. There's the GI version. And I'll say OK. Next one here. Should be there. Did I do the wrong one? Yeah, I think this is the wrong HDRI. I think that's the mistake I made. So I'll need to update that. That's, a, that's my bad. Uh, let me come back here. There we go. So I've set those two correctly. There we go. I'll go ahead and say OK. Both of those are set. Double check. Yep, good. All right, now it's time to do that first test render. So I'll go ahead, and like I said, I made it small before I did my render. So let me bring up this master site file. And we'll do a render. <laughs> so now that I have that, as I'm looking at this, and I know it's small, but I can see that the sky is dark. That's good. But I'm seeing the ground. So I made a mistake. And that mistake was I left my sun turned on. So I need to come back and figure out where my sun was. Uh, and sometimes you have to do SEL light. And there's my sun. There's my other lights. Um, should have had a. And keep that, and let me make a new uh, sublayer. Oh, site. There we go. Oh. Huh. I thought I had a sun layer, but I didn't. So let me put that on the sun layer. Change object layer. And that'll allow me to turn the sun off, and then I can test that rendering again. So obviously, I can't have the sun on while I do that rendering because it's a nighttime render. So we'll do another quick test here. And I can already tell just by the early uh, rendering that the ground is dark. 
and therefore uh, we are correct in our nighttime setting. Looks like the sky might still be a little bit light, uh, so I may make a few adjustments to it. I can go back into the V-Ray options. I can go back into environment and the reflection refraction background. Maybe I'll go to 0.5 and then I can re-render. And so this is very much about the trial and error process, making sure that I get the sky dark enough to be the night render. If I get these settings correct, the good news is I'll be able to use them as the exterior settings. All right, that's looking pretty good. So we can see a little bit of a silhouette of the mountain, a little bit lighter sky. Okay, that feels pretty good. You guys can't see it at all on the projector. I can see it. Um, and so now I feel pretty good about how this is set up and it's time to do a, a much higher quality rendering. Uh, so really, that's about all that's necessary in today's exercise. We're just switching out the HDRI to change it. So we've, we've already have our view. We've switched the night HDRI. I already added my lights because I did that in the last one. If you hadn't added your lights, you would need to add your lights in. Um, and then it's time to go ahead and do the, the final high quality rendering. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and save in my V-Ray options. So once again, I'll open up my V-Ray options. I'm going to save this set of settings. So I'll click on the Save button, and this is going to go into my uh, flash drive because I want to be able to reload it here. And so this was the interior night V-Ray settings, and I'll go ahead and click on Save. That then saves these settings. And so like I said, I can go back to the load icon here once it's done saving. Maybe. I will be able to go back to the load icon and I can say, you know what, I want to switch back into the day settings. Open that up. It'll close the drawer, good. It already knows where my HDRI files are because it's my flash drive. I've already customized it once, so I'm good. All I would have to do is turn the sun back on, and I can do a daytime rendering. So it's pretty easy. So what if I want to do one of those sunset renderings? Let's go through the process for that. So same thing here. I'd go to my V-Ray Quick Rendering Setups, and I'd look at and select one of the sunsets. I'll do this sunset scene too, because it has the, uh, the sunset on the horizon here. Though the truth is, in this particular view, I'm looking kind of north, so I don't know that I'm going to see anything from the sunset anyway, but it is what it is. So the, um, the sunset scene two, I already have it, uh, but you'll need to go to the HDR maps under the freebie section and download it if you haven't already. I don't have the license to be able to redistribute the, uh, the files, so you have to get them yourself for free. Uh, but I show you where to get them and you have to purchase them for zero, which is fine. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and right click on the HDR VizOpt file and I'm going to say save link as, and I'll put this on the desktop again. Save, perfect. And I'm going to jump into my Rhino file. There's my master site. I'll go to my V-Ray options. I'll open a drawer and then go ahead and click on the load settings. From here, I'll go to the desktop and I'll load in the sunset. There you go. Now those are set correctly. So these sunsets take a little bit of work, and depending on their settings, you may or may not need a sun. So in this case, the sunset scene two, the sun is below the horizon, so the sun should be off. In this set, the sun is just barely on the horizon, so it's telling you a date and a time to put the sun. In this last one here, uh, again, the sun sh is just barely on the horizon, so you would need to have the sun on and the settings are gonna vary because of that. So we wanna make sure that you're aware of what the sun setting should be. So in my case, the sun should be off, so I'll make sure the sun is turned off, that's good. Then I need to once again go to the environment, and I need to make sure that I know where the skylight and the background are. So I'll click on the M, and I'm looking for this 059 reference file. I have it under the um, sunset. And here it is, 
There's the reference file. Perfect. And I'll say OK. The GI skylight. There's the ENV. And I'll go ahead and say OK. So I've attached both of the environment files. Next thing to do would be go to the output. And we're going to make that output small. Again, just to test it. And then we'll go ahead and do a rendering of it. So in this case, not too much should have changed. We can already see the blurred background here is dark, uh, which is a good thing. And there we go. I know it's blurry, but the background is turning out dark the way it should. The difference, which you guys can't see on the projector that I can see here, is that in the first file, the, the, um, the darkness outside wasn't so blue, where in this case, it's more of a sunset, kind of a bluish purple. Um, and so, like I said, I'm looking kind of northeast, so I'm not going to see much through this window. If I switched my view at this point to be in a different part of the building, so let's say I was looking out this way at the horizon. Let's, let me drop down a little bit more, trying to make sure that I can see it out of a window here. Let's try that. I don't know whether it's going to render out correctly or not. So as I'm looking out this direction, I'm seeing more of that, that, uh, that horizon. You can see a little bit of a pink glow uh, in there. So I'm trying to get my view correct. And at some place, I would see the sunset. I just have to reorient myself uh, to see it correctly. OK, so once again, I could go into my V-Ray options. And now that I have the sunset set correctly, I could resave. And this time, we'll go into my flash drive, into today's folder again. There we go. And this would be an interior sunset V-Ray settings. And then I'll go ahead and save. And so the advantage here is I can flip back and forth between all of them relatively easily. And that uh, is a good thing. So I would encourage you today, as you start to get your view set up uh, correctly, Spend some time, try a few different sunset scenes, see which one starts to feel right for you. Try the night scenes, see which one of those feels right for you. Um, I will try to update my mistake in this, this second uh, VizOp file. Um, so I'll, I'll correct that. And um, then you guys can actually perform your interior nighttime renders. There's no reason that you shouldn't have a pretty good, reasonable, um, almost turn inable nighttime rendering today. So we're, we're moving that direction. So what I would encourage you to do today and also on um, Wednesday, assuming that your model is relatively done, I would encourage you to actually try to get a version that you could use for your final. Doesn't mean it has to be the final version. It just means that it's one less thing that you have to stress out over because you have a placeholder. You have something versus nothing. Um, so give yourself something today. Um, so I'm, I'm going to stop uh, talking today. We will come back next class, and I will do the exterior night renderings. I'll talk a little bit longer next class, and I'll do some things like adding um, like a pool of water and do a reflecting light in the water and whatever, just because a lot of people want to do that as part of the nighttime rendering. So I'll do a little bit more demo work next class. But today, I really want you to try to get to, the, to, to an interior night rendering. and basically kind of finish up on everything that you've been working on. It's time to, time to get things resolved, trying to be done, uh, and trying to focus on the, the renderings, and then next week, the line drawings that we're getting out of it. OK? Any questions? No? Nope. All right, I'll let you start working.